Liberty Fest 2018. Uh, thank you, Joe, for inviting me to say a couple words here. Uh, one thing that I do want to say is I have some interviews still left over from last year. And I'll be doing some more interviews and putting them out real soon, lusandershow.com. Check it out. Um, a friend of mine that I was talking to not too long ago, you guys know him, Christopher Runberg, he described Liberty Fest as group therapy because it's a place where you can go and be around people that understand you. You're, some of you are still weird, but you're not, you're not as weird as you are out in like general population. You, you fit in a little bit more. I, some of you are still a little weird, though. But anyway, is a place to where you don't have to explain the, the simplest things. You can be yourself. There's an understanding of acceptable behavior, even though one person has chosen not to display an understanding of it this year. No. Actually, I do that for a hobby, but anyway. But the thing about it is, it's an opportunity to exchange ideas and just share the family bond that we have with each other. To old friends, to new friends, to freedom. To freedom! To freedom. 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 Oh, it's children's books. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Anarchy Round Table. World famous. World famous. My name is Joe. Uh, my name is Brett. Dale. Mike. Danny. <laughs> First names only. Yeah. You, you could use whatever name you want. Um, this is um, freedom here. Um, so before, um, be, be, before I came over here, um, while Brett was giving his talk, I went around to gather photos of um, the venue. And while I was out there, I asked people what they would um, like to know um, from Brett. I didn't realize Dale, um, Dale was going to be here, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, He's got a bad we'll, we'll get to you. To we, we got the uh, diversity quarter going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and what one person asked um, after I explained. Can I guess? What you do. Oh, okay. I'd be curious about um, your guests. They want to know about the military making animal-human hybrids. <laughs> yes. v very close. Okay. But no, that, that's not what My it mic's is. a little hot. Has anybody seen the uh, no. deer with a human head out in the woods here? <laughs> You're not funny. All right. All right. All right. No, that's seriously. I, I, did, I did gather a question, and I thought this was interesting, and I, I wondered if you had any thoughts on it. And actually, this is a situation that has happened to at least one person in our um, little anarchy family here. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts when people face this situation where they're 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 unschoolers, they're they're um, they're, they're they're basically like like us with their philosophy of, of how they, they raise their children. They don't want to you know force them to go to school and all this stuff, but then they have an ex spouse who wants to force the issue and um, I, I, the, the question was if if the children are ended up being forced to go to school mm. what would your advice be to a parent to try to mitigate the damage that that situation would create i that would be very contextual because it would matter how old the children were were they forced into school after being unschooled is that the kind of situation that we're talking about well, in the situation that I know of, the real situation that actually did happen, um, yeah, but the fictitious one that wasn't spelled out. So, well, I I think that uh, just a little bit of hope. If a child has one parent who is like educated and enthusiastic uh, when it comes to unschooling, that is a huge advantage that most children do not have. So I, I've, I've heard this story a lot, I think, and I, you know, I don't have a, a clear answer because obviously every situation is different, but something that's uh, comforting in these situations is like to say to that parent, well, the good news for this child is you're their parent, right? So even if they have to go to school, it's just more about school survival, right? Which is, which is one of the reasons why so many people don't survive school with their minds or their self-esteem intact is because n nobody prepared them for what was gonna happen to them there, 
you know? So if you have a parent, uh, and I've talked to people in this community who've been in this situation, and I said to this mother, I said, the good thing for your kids is that you're their mom. And these kids even had like a running start with unschooling. So if they have to be inserted into that environment, they have much better bullshit detectors. I think they have much better, you know, sense of self right and and an understanding that their time is important that their needs are important that they're important as people i mean school is like fifteen thousand hour curriculum and your time and your thoughts are not valuable right empty your head we'll fill it with shit. uh your time doesn't matter we decide a schedule for you and if you've lived any other way at a formative time in life um, I think that's not going to have as devastating an effect as it maybe had on many of us who didn't have parents who said, you know, school's not exactly education. Sometimes it's more like the opposite of education. It's kind of training and indoctrination and it wears you down. And they said, we, we all have to do it. You know, and this is your education and this is your only shot because you need to go from here into college and that's how you get a job. I mean, that was basically what I was told by parents who thought they were doing the right thing and parents who thought they were steering me in the best direction. So to even have that problem, right, to even have that problem means your children are in a much better position than a lot of children in this country are. It's yeah. called making lemonade, folks. <laughs> half glass, glass half full. Yeah. <clears throat> what I uh, what I noticed about the school systems in general is that they're not just teaching uh, indoctrination system; it's all false training. So you're actually learning uh, completely inappropriate information because it's not true. And so I think that if your parent is aware of that, they go back and teach every day what is true, so you can compare it to the lies you were taught during the day. And I think that will give your child a heightened sense of awareness of truth and get them uh, balanced so they understand, although there is this propaganda that I'm taught in school, uh, I, my parent also taught me truth and did research and showed me the research about the actual things they talked about uh, today in school. So now they're just more aware of both the indoctrination systems of the other uh, humans and they're a more prepared person so they can make better decisions about what they're going to do with their life and what they're going to believe, how they're going to treat other people and uh, how to interpret the world they're in. I suppose that could even be a, um, a life lesson in itself because they can see what the school system is doing exactly. while it's doing it. Right. And then teaching about teaching, learning. Uh, so most humans don't learn in that way, but most people are taught by sitting in this classroom, you're going to learn this way when most people are tactile learners. Most humans learn by touching and by experiencing. So the entire system is actually corrupted by the reality you're violating basic human principles of how humans learn. And then you're expected to, to dumb it down and, and listen to the jargon of propaganda that's just all lies anyway. But my thing is if we teach it, uh, kids truth about what actually was, they can understand what is now and then they can make a better future. Do you have any thoughts on Common Core? <laughs> <laughs> next, next drink, question. drink more, please. <laughs> so questions like that go away. It, it keeps you grounded. <laughs> having uh, having someone that you can actually talk to it will, will keep you grounded. That's what I was thinking when Brett was saying that. It, just having one parent will keep you grounded. So I have a question, um, Brett. Yeah. Uh, or Brian, I forget your name. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh i want like you him. to know my name before we go on i think that's important Our friendship starts with first names okay so brian all right go ahead <laughs> um, <laughs> um what if you have uneducated parents and what i mean by that is if your parents have um they have the best intentions for you, right? But they're okay. not particularly educated in anything. They're not really specialized in anything. And while you can teach them on schooling and, you know, schooling outside of the system, if they believe some crazy-ass beliefs like God is real... Um, <laughs> um, Let's not go there right now. Um, how do you go about, like, can you really advocate a, a, a system where misinformation can be utilized or... Uh, misinformation can be spread mm -hmm. by the parents 
Uh, can you really advocate that? Well, it's going to happen whether they're in school or not, right? Like, so if the alternative is sending them to school, if that's a pro-school argument because the parents are going to indoctrinate them in all this kind of crazy stuff, parents can still do, parents still get them half their waking life too, right? Right. So, um, it's a, it's a, it'd be a weak argument for sending them to school. Right. No, I mean, I, to be totally fair, like I, I worked with a lot of kids who came from broken homes, from rough neighborhoods, who had alcoholic and drug addict and absentee parents. And there are some cases where kids, and it could even be for the reasons that you're talking about, because their parents are like crazy, crazy religious and the kid knows that that's crazy and doesn't want any part of that and gets shamed or uh, there's love withdrawal for not like buying into that. And a lot of those kids see school as a respite. You know, I've certainly worked with kids who were in these really difficult home situations and school was the only place where they felt like somewhat safe. Well, my question wasn't really focused in on, um, you know, sending them to school mm. uh, if they're crazy religious or something. But the question becomes to me, it's more of an ethical question in that, is it fair to, uh, sorry. Yeah, he has the hottest mic. Okay. Everybody else has not hot mics. Okay. Hello. Is Hello. It, Thanks, Cox. Danny, tuck into the mic. All right. Is it fair to the child... Much better. ...if the parents... Um, it, I'm not trying to say we should send kids to school. What I'm saying is that it may... Their situations can arise where the parents are so uneducated or misinformed that even if they do unschooling, they can still teach their children badly or wrongly in the context of they're misinformed and they go about living their life like that for a very long period of time. And there are ramifications with long-term misinformation. So it, it kind of begs the question is, I guess, is as much as I like the concept of unschooling, I do question the capability of parents at times um, to actually deliver useful or actual real information that is pr pragmatic, practical, and uh, uh, lines up with reality. Okay, well, uh, I don't want this to sound like an escape hatch from your question, but I'm not particularly advocating anything as a panacea to the current problem. So if I was saying that everybody should unschool, obviously that's prescriptive and that would be a problem and it overlooks a lot of situations where... Um, yeah, kids are going to be in some intellectually and emotionally damaging home environments. But I'm not advocating anything uh, across the board except the kind of education that can be used for self-defense. And you're right, it's a, it's a tricky problem. I don't know what to do in that situation, right? I mean, it, uh, and using the word fair, like what's unfair? Like when, when you raise a question about fair, can you elaborate on that? Well, when I think of fairness, uh, I guess towards a child, I tend to think that you should teach a child uh, what is reality, um, despite your beliefs, because that's the only way you can arrive at a, a fair sense of what reality is, right? And you're going to need that in the long haul when you're trying to live through life. You want to avoid delusion, right? That's mm -hmm. the point. Um, and I think the fairest thing to do is to provide a full context and a full reality to a, a, a young mind. Does the school system help with that? I'm not no. certain about that, but... But you're not advocating for that. You're not, talking I'm, about the defense of somebody who's definitely going to get the opposite of what you're promoting. Okay. Right. I, I want to rain on that parade for just okay. a second. Yeah. Because what you said was that the uneducated, uh, uninitiated, uneducated person or family, and I, I get that concept. The problem is all of our worst killers in schools, all of the active shooters, all the Unabombers are the most highly educated people from the best of families, the people with two parent households that are Christian uh, and educated. So, and upper middle class, let's be clear. That's who's the active shooters are with no girlfriend. I don't know what that part's about, but uh, you've never seen anyone interview an active shooter's girlfriend. That never happened. To end active shooters, we just get a bunch of girls to be girlfriends. We would stop this today. Yeah, we could. We don't need guns, we need girlfriends. 72 virgins. We, we need hey, the incels to 720. be 720. Girlfriends. Well, so uh, I have a, a <laughs> comment that um, a, some, somewhat related to this. Uh, I was in uh, Mexico with my ex-mother-in-law at a restaurant this winter. She speaks no English. 
and I speak a little bit of Spanish. So I oh, hand her know. to the menu, and this woman is, I mean, most of uh, my ex-in-laws don't, you know, went to like third grade, second grade education, but they, most of them own restaurants and are very, very successful. And uh, this woman's like 50, 60 years old, and I hand her to the menu, and she was, and she's very successful, and she goes, I can't read. And I was really shocked, because she's such an intelligent person, but uh, her education was probably zero school, zero reading, but she's a highly intelligent person. I go, well, I bet you know money, though, don't you? Because I know she's probably more successful than I am, even though, you know, she's had to struggle with- All serial reading, killers which, can read and write very well. <laughs> Just, just want to put that out there. I feel like there's. I feel like we we can. This is like a challenging thing that we can dig deeper with. But I'm kind of coming up short as far as like like the fairness problem. Life right? isn't fair. That's what I always. Right. Enron was filled with college educated people. Everyone was educated. Yeah, but most of those people who actually are now in prison. No, most of those people who made the decisions were at the top managers and were, were killing, stealing all billions of dollars. <laughs> So is it that, like if I were to reframe what you're saying is like how does and stop me as soon as I go off the tracks stop <laughs> <laughs> Give me just a chance to do a couple more words <laughs> How does society protect children from negligent or in incapable parents we stop having children <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. No, I mean, truth <laughs> and embarrass the, the only, everyone. I think the, the the answer to that is really, you know, what used to happen when the entire community was uh, was vigilant in the, the the raising the community, the family, the extended family. It takes a village, kind of. It thing. takes a village. Hillary, there you go. Way to sum that up for me. Okay. That sounds Lynching like communism. Took place with a village. No, it's a lot different than having no, that's the communism. government. It's a lot different it's than communism. <laughs> Shut up, Danny. It's a lot different than having the communism. government uh, come uh, in and, and take uh, over the situation. Community is not automatically communism. <laughs> it's commie. For the first Unity. six letters. <laughs> <laughs> I like, no, see, I, I, I like the idea. And uh, all right, so uh, the context for all of this was Hillary Clinton, right? Who said it takes a village. What did she mean by a village? She'd been to Africa and listened to them talk about that. Yeah. What what was Hillary Clinton using the word village as a euphemism for? Because she'd been to Africa and doing on the tour, and they talked about that. The, the tribe, I the, get it. The state. Well, uh, I thought the yeah. village thing is older than Hillary. It, oh, it is very she, much so. Yeah, but uh, it takes a village is a valid idea. I'm just not saying it. It doesn't say it requires a village, right? But right. Hillary repurposed that or appropriated it to talk about like state programs. That's my understanding of it. Oh, okay. So now every time that. you hear this idea of community, people think Hillary, state. communism. The nanny state. Freedom. The nanny state. Freedom camps. Freedom camps. Yeah, freedom camps. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what's the end of that thought? That, that when, when people lived in communities <laughs> and functioned in communities. We still live in those. Yeah, the, well, we'll, we don't really function in communities, Danny. What's the name of the neighbor across the street from you? I'm going to go with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where you live. The guy with Yeah, the I think his name is Joe. Oh, okay. All right. But you think. You're not sure. I'm not quite certain. Yeah, no. that's what we're matter. talking about. But that's because all my neighbors are predators and pedophiles. So. <laughs> no, it, it, it has changed since I was a child. I used to know the names Danny. of every neighbor <laughs> on my block, and um, you know, as, as a child, I would go and sit in the on the porch of the old people in the neighborhood, and they would pass on life lessons to me. Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore. Just like the Catholic priest ladies. That's to right. I was gonna say that they're passing on. No, 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 no. We don't throw out community because the priest had sex with a kid one time. One time. <laughs> That's some kind of fallacy. Uh, that is some. Times. Oh, but one time there was a priest and a kid, so everyone. I'm I don't know my next door neighbor. Or wait, do you have a problem with pedophiles? files in your neighborhood is that real <laughs> he's full of shit. Uh, i don't know i've like, never looked at you've never talked to your neighbors in states oh, oh, well <laughs> because in states well the, the news has told me that all my neighbors are rapists and i just don't talk to them because they're all rapists 
<laughs> they told you they came on and said, Danny, don't even go out there. <laughs> he doesn't like the competition. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, don't, don't you watch Fox they, they News? It's fair and balanced. Me and you, yeah, yeah I've seen it. Yeah, I've really? seen it. <laughs> They're blocking us. So where were we? Community? <laughs> Community is you okay. communism. Oh. No progress yet. Fucking commie. Next question. I know, I, but I, I agree with Joe. My childhood was, how old are you? About one year older. About one year older than you. I'm 41. Okay. All right. When I grew up, it was the same. Now, I grew up in a nice area in New Hampshire, and it was quiet, and it was, you know, a neighborhood. But that was the experience that I had. And I don't see kids. I go back and visit the same town where I still have families. And that community that is a bedroom community, right, um, is completely disconnected. Nobody knows anybody anymore because everybody's been sucked out of the um, their immediate surroundings into this artificial world, I think. That sounds like white privilege to me in that nice, like, little community. I mean, I think part of it is just, I don't know if if it, there's a lot of reasons why this could happen, but it could be just the um, invention of air conditioning. Like, well, the, things I mean, like that have been blamed, television, yeah, air conditioning, yeah. the internet, sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there, like, this this change, people are inside all the time, so you don't see the old well, yeah, person on the porch to come walk by go- and say hello to that you. That goes back to my original point, is that every every one of my neighbors is a rapist, apparently, according to Fox News and Fox News Detroit and all that. You know, actually, Danny does bring up a valid point. He's They're not really rapists, but what, what he's saying is people today are more afraid for their children's safety than probably at any other time, and they do not let their children go far out of sight. And then sometimes, if they do, even the state pretends to be afraid of them. It's your Hummer, dude. That's you, Dale. Yo, you fucked us up. Hit it. You gotta fire that dude. Yeah. (laughs) Talk, say a word in between each beep. Can we get a demonstration? (laughs) Listen closely, pay attention. (laughs) This is part Um, of the demonstration. Does my mic even work? There we go. You got it. We think. Yeah, you think. So, it's a key. It's just a key. It's just All a key. Right. So I was saying that Danny actually did bring up a valid point, and I said that today people have more fear for their children's safety than probably any other time, even though it's, we live in the safest world that we've ever lived in. And even the state is a participant in the action of this fear because sometimes parents who are not so afraid and want to let their children do the things that I did when I was a kid, the parents get busted. Fear breeds state. Yeah, I would say that. Isn't that how the state perpetuates itself is through fear? And uh, Yes. And I I notice that's another thing I noticed in Mexico is kids can still be kids. They can go run around and be crazy and, you know, play out after dark. Yeah, my parents, like, they sheltered me like crazy. They put a helmet on my head and then they put me in a cage most of the time right after (laughs) high school. (laughs) Well, apparently that shit doesn't work. (laughs) Yeah. Apparently you hit your head at some point, even maybe the helmet. I deny all charges of being my head getting, whatever. With all that hair, you don't need a helmet. I mean, it's yeah. pretty soft. I think Mike's gay, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> he, he <helps. laughs> so I don't uh, feel like, I don't feel like we tied that up nice and tight. That um, I, I don't feel like we had, came to a resolution for your, for your challenge or your problem. No, I don't. And I, I don't think that there is. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong I'm not against unschooling or I'm, I'm not even necessarily against uh, public education I have conflicting values I, I, I think at times that it would be nice that if everyone was taught you know at least mathematics and reading but mm-hmm. you can't f- I, I'm opposed to the idea of forcing everyone to but at the same time I'll be honest if, if you can't do math in front of me uh, like just very basic math, I'm probably not going to trust you with any type of business that I might be interested in with you. Sure. What and, about them? And so to that end, I can't, it's hard for me to say, particularly with, with, um, with uneducated parents. And I'm not saying that in like a, a, a demeaning way. What, 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 what troubles me is that it, you, how do I put it? 
you need to have some basis of foundation to be actually functional uh, ed education huh oh you can't all right sorry um you need some type of found I, I i think everyone needs a foundation of education at some level to operate within society and if you introduce parents a lot of parents i've seen and i'm not trying to be judgmental but i am judgmental um <laughs> Um, a lot of parents will teach their thing, their children like nonsense and garbage. So I, uh, the unschooling doesn't fix that. Right. And this is like the challenge of having or living in a society, right, where we could say the easy answer would be to say, well, we built a community. I mean, the honest truth is I don't give a shit about almost everybody. Right. And I think anyone who's being honest with themselves feels the same way. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. So you build a community or a tribe, your family and what extends beyond it. It could be um, a physical location. It could be around ideas, which is what we have in New Hampshire. It's what you guys have in Michigan. And fuck everybody else. Right. But the problem then is is that everybody else is a horde outside of your community, right. right? And what do you do when they try to come in or your community has to go out and interact with those people? Right. And yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, there's no good answer to that That's problem. You have to have a higher level of understanding. It's very important for your survival that you understand other people and how yeah, they think. I agree. How they interpret you. And if you don't do that, you're, you're literally killing your future you have to right. understand those around you and that's one of the one of the things i've seen in a lot of uh whether i'm in new hampshire or whether i'm in uh california or other places what happens is the different groups of very intelligent people uh seem to believe that other people are very intelligent this is a problem people you guys are very smart and yes a lot of other people are just not i'm not trying to be mean they're not intellectual they're not intellectual they're not analytical they just feel they use theology they don't care about facts. You mean Fifi's? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and what they're going to do is they're going to make decisions based on that to decide whether you get to live or die or whether you're a good person or a bad person. Right. And and it's through it's through these other counter uh, productive ways of thinking that the world is is functioning. They're not analytical. They're not going to be community. They're not fair minded people. They're not about freedom. They don't want. You could say, well, I just I don't do things my way and you know have my family or have my situation. They want to interfere in that and they're willing to kill you to do that for their belief systems. And understanding that's very important because you want to make sure they don't do that. And they outnumber you 10 or 100 to 1. So these insane people, they, they outnumber the sane uh, people many times. I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't call them insane. What I would say is that they're just, they're not very well uh, well, educated honestly like but, honestly like when i see the mob rise up like if i see like a religious mob rise up like, let, i'll just use islam for a very cheap uh, scapegoat here when i see people who um who who believe ardently that it's okay to kill your neighbor because it's based in some scripture that they read and the scripture itself is bullshit but yet it has mass appeal because it emotionally appeals to them uh, well, yeah yeah um, no Muslims ever asked people to drink Kool-Aid and killed all their people. No. Ever. <laughs> but, once. I mean, one Muslim did, you know, sit there and say, never. I have the right but to have sex with a nine-year-old. birth certificate? Um, <laughs> and honestly, Dale, how much Kool-Aid uh, did they have? Anyway. <laughs> I'm sure they're dead. I don't I, I know. I like to make... <laughs> Can't ask we don't them. even know if they have Kool-Aid. <laughs> we don't know if Kool-Aid is international. Is, is Kool-Aid international? <laughs> Yeah. Bug juice, bug juice. I went to camp. Bug, bug juice. <laughs> Don't drink the. Good bull. point. <laughs> I, I just, I just slandered a company. I, I want to take that back. Yeah, I yeah. want to make a point though. It's that's why I believe in the free market and anarchy and um, volunteerism is because you can't save the world. You can only save yourself. And if everybody does what they can for themselves and helps out when they can, then the shit's gonna fall where it falls. And you know, some people are gonna are gonna get fucked but should we like enslave other people to take care of them i mean this is this is reality i told my kids a million times life ain't fair you know it's like it's life's a bitch <laughs> and if, if i think the, the 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 most democratic free way to be is just the free market which you is just said democratic democratic meaning that's free market no. people can do what they want <laughs> 
Democratic in the... Just let it go, Shut up. Democratic meaning it takes a village. No. <laughs> Democratic meaning a lot of Majority people, rules. A lot of people equate Democratic with being freedom Voting. and people decide what they want for themselves. But Democratic in a way that the free market will decide, the market will decide. So you do what you want, I do what I want. I don't step on your foot, foot and... That's it. So that the complication, this out. the complication of what you're saying is what he's saying, right? That we're we're kind of facing um, this exterior beyond our communities or beyond our families, beyond our spheres of control, of a lot of people who are deeply irrational, who are doing the things that they want to do or they think they want to do, but they could have disastrous effects on people in their proximity. I mean, that's kind of the idea, right? And what to do about that besides just, you know, point guns. There were thousands of lynchings and every lynching uh, had thousands of good Christians that were watching and they were all good lynchings. There was never a bad lynching. No one ever said, let's lynch someone for a really bad reason. It was always a very logical, rational and good reason for the mass murder of someone who did nothing. <laughs> so well, understand well. that you're so the idea of that somehow the masses are going to come together and do right things uh, is not a, a logical um, uh, way of thinking. So, it, you know, that's why I like the concept of people thinking freely, uh, consensually, not thinking about forcing people to do things. That's the pathway to a peaceful society is where people uh, think independently. Uh, and don't try to force other people to do things in general. And that's what we do as an organization. We inspire and not force people. So in general, what I like about you know the whole concept here is that people uh, are against forcing people to do things, which leads to the, the pathway to death. And, and you introduced this by saying that you thought it was a problem of education. I'm surprised you don't want to take it in an IQ direction. No, I mean, I could go to IQ. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Molyneux told me that, Dale, or, uh, that Brown here was uh, obviously the, the most inferior race here. Um, <laughs> I am truly did not say obviously that. inferior. I want to say that up front. Uh, well, it's because it's because color of your skin. That's what that they correct. <laughs> that is correct. Oh, that's so easy. We're, that col we're color coded. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Pay attention. You wow, black? Danny, your skin is almost the same color. I'm blackish. Yeah, but <laughs> not well, right now. Not now. <laughs> it depends on who's looking. The, who's talking you know, to me? You know, white is right, right? Um, <laughs> No, um, as a Mexican, how are you feeling right now? I just want to know. <laughs> how do Mexicans feel right now? I feel employed. Andale, andale. <laughs> <laughs> My grass is getting long, Daniel. <laughs> um, no, I, um, I, I think it's, it's interesting. He can say that because he's almost black. Yeah, almost. fuck off. <laughs> um, not quite there yet. I'm not. I'm not jobless. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's interesting to see uh, when I look at like uh, to elaborate on your point. I suppose is that when you look at I guess the brown or black countries, mainly, mainly Africa. No, no offense to you. <laughs> That's a country now. <laughs> That's a country. Yeah, yeah I think I you need to work IQ on is important, as you pointed out. Countries like Africa. <laughs> He, he are only recognizable by people with the proper IQ. Go on, sir. He was trying to say Ann Arbor. Go on, go on, Ann Arbor. Go on sir. <laughs> Please continue about your country of Africa. Yeah. I mean, people are so dumb they think it's an actual uh, continent. We was <laughs> luckily you're here. Translate. Hey, get her done. We was kings. Come on now. Um, <laughs> Tell it. Tell it, brother. Um, I do think it's it's interesting to see um, uh, to your point, and I, I'm. This is it, it's, it's interesting to see that uh, the more poor countries, and a lot of them tend to be, I'll be honest, ethnically speaking, they, uh, and color speaking, they're, they're Chinese. Uh, it's They're on the continent of Africa, mostly. <laughs> well, yeah. no, not even that, but even Central America. <laughs> no, sure, Central America, the Middle East, yeah. Yeah, you see, you see poverty rates that are astoundingly sad. They're mm -hmm. crushing if you actually read into it. All Africa has a bunch of diamonds. Who wants that and oil and resources? That's bull crap. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Send it to Europe where they can use it. Right. But what? Got to be smart about this. Resources but, are not important. It's interesting to see <laughs> that. Silly. 
That's why you're poor. You have too many resources. Well, look what happens. Africa is a prime example. <laughs> when you have those resources, what are you going to do with it? Someone has to help you with it, like Europe. Yeah, like the white guy sitting next Little, to you. Little, really big countries like Europe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the country of Europe had to help the country of Africa because they had no idea what to do with all those damn resources. Damn it. Countries yes. working together. Exactly. It's beautiful. That's what we do. <laughs> it, it takes a village, people. It takes a village. I don't... I feel it's a global village to raise a continent. <laughs> That's right. There's some alternative truth going on here. Alternative truth right here. I feel like we're almost to the point that you're trying to make. Take that. Take the thing a little bit further that you're talking about because it was, yeah, it was brought up along IQ. Well, well, okay. Your no, IQ. No, it's, not, it's not really. It's, it's not the IQ issue that what I find interesting. What I find interesting is that if you look at the, the poorest countries on the planet, mm -hmm. and arguably I'm from one of the poorest countries on the planet. What's that? Uh, United Honduras. States. Honduras. Honduras. It's the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere uh, by GDP. Um, America has helped you a lot. It has. I'm sure. Maybe they should invade. Um, <laughs> no, you don't have resources, sir. <laughs> no, we got plenty of minerals. Chicks are not resource resources anymore. Yes, they are. Not anymore, <laughs> sir. You said chicks? Chicks. <laughs> yeah. there, was a, there was a time where the chicks could have been resources, but it's, that's not, it's, but what, not now. What, when you look at Honduras. It's like titanium, if, oil. <laughs> If we look at Honduras as an example of, let's say, if we want to go the, um, the, the path of civilization, uh, Honduras arguably is one of the shittiest areas you can get into and live there. Sure. Um, and it's, it's disappointing because the, a lot of the people who live there are exceptionally ignorant. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying this, you know, as... as Too much it, sun? Huh? Too much sun. Too much sun? Yes. Lack You're by the equator, maybe? makes you dumber. Yeah. Closer well. to the sun. It's distance to the sun causes like tanness. Look at you. Yeah. Look at your hair, sir. It's the sun. No. Come on. The women like my hair. But they're in Honduras. <laughs> <laughs> There's none of them here. Ah. I'm not going to list names, but uh, I definitely disagree. <laughs> Anybody to, to be fair, Danny, women do like walk, his hair. Come to the podium. <laughs> I've seen um, it happen in bars and stuff. They come up and... Go, going to Brett's point is that, really, when you look at how poorly someone or a group or even a country can be, uh, how poorly educated they could, in a sense, collectively be, mm -hmm. it's... So that brings up an interesting topic. If this, you have this is a gag where the point never gets made. This is just, we keep just, 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 FDR should have helped Honduras too. I mean, yes. Come, sorry, go ahead. With the new deal. We interrupt? need a new deal no, no, no. for Honduras. No, it's, fu it's funny. <laughs> okay. I've just been like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like no, at the edge no, of my seat. No, he brings up an interesting point though. This is okay. kind of I want to interject. If you have an entire society of people who are lacking in... Uh, army to force others to do their will. Well, well, that's an issue. That's a separate issue. But what I, what I was talking about was <laughs> if you have an entirely an uneducated society. <laughs> yeah. How do you pass on knowledge to the next generation? Ask America to allow you to <laughs> not be <laughs> colonialized and dominated. That Send over help. military. Actually, advisors. you're probably right about that probably, because the, because the probably. people will get wealthy. If they're left alone. If you understand what CIA that, does all over Latin America, the conversation gets different. No, and I, I agree, but... <laughs> you seem to remember something in Honduras. Yeah, because if people are left alone, they become wealthy. If they become CIA wealthy, in education is a, um, <laughs> yeah. a luxury of... of Let's wealth. ignore the CIA in Honduras and have a conversation. Go. No, no, wow. no. I, I, I agree with Dale. <laughs> I, I think that... I think he hates I, brown I, people. I, I, thought, I thought I was agreeing with him. Only Hondurans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> so we have... Three people here who agree that this is a very difficult conversation to have, neglecting the influence that America has covertly on a lot Everything. of these countries. <laughs> well, right, I'm not, I'm countries. Not, well, not say, saying America is unfair and that's too uh, inflammatory. Amer intelligence. No, no. It's 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 if you have enough people who are not educated and they're all breeding and they teach their children bad ideas or misinformation. The Christopher Columbus did not come to America. So start a government. He came to, I know where he came to. Honduras? No. Um, Cuba. The, 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 yeah, he did, he did end up in Cuba. Not according to American children, in plays every day. I know. And I get that. But um, 
but when I look at the education level ver- of the U.S., let's say versus Honduras, it's 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 a very sad state of affairs. D- despite the fact that the U.S. is a sad state of affairs, Honduras looks like a black hole. Danny, education is primarily the result of prosperity and not the other way around. Right. If the United States left Honduras alone, it would become wealthy, and then it would become educated. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. And the reason why I say that is because innovation comes from intellect and education. But, um, how do you, how do you, put put in my my mother-in-law, my ex-mother-in-law? who is extremely intelligent and has zero education but understands money and literally I would say has mo- more money than any one of us on the table I would say she's really Mexico. good with, I would say she's really good with math but it, it Not necessarily I was terrible at math and I never knew that terrible. she I, I mean I, I already knew that, that she <laughs> I didn't know it's terrible with math. Just recently, <laughs> I mean, but you were educated in Detroit, right? I was not educated at all. Absolutely not. Well, I'm no, totally uneducated. I'm, I'm making you, fun you of you. Clearly, no, 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 I'm from Ann Arbor. Yeah. No. I'm from Ann Arbor. I was totally uneducated there as well. Yeah, but you've you've clearly rectified that situation on your own, though. You, you, yes, right po- I'm, I'm allergic to poverty, so I yeah. had to be very. I was told that if you didn't go to college, I come from a family of doctors. Uh, every one of my family's doctors or lawyers or something. So you failed out of med school? I failed out of everything. Are you kidding? I failed out. Of, I failed out of German class, and I speak better German than anybody in my family. My sister got an A plus four years, and I still speak better German than her. So it turns out that people learn differently. Uh, and in my family, education is everything. So if you didn't go to college, you're literally nothing. And I make more money than all of them combined. And at age 30, I stopped having to physically work for money. My mother still has to work. So she actually just retired just now. So, you know, your concept of what you think IQ and intelligence is, is skewed by false teachings. This is not true. None of it. I, no. I, all I can tell you is uh, my IQ or whatever it is, it has nothing to do with, with I got a D in, I got a D in gym. Who can get a D in gym? How is that even possible? I love Jim, and I still got a D. No, but <laughs> okay. So, are you are you gonna? What, what, I teach PhDs. I love this part. People who have extreme advanced college degrees work for me. I love that. It's so funny. Okay, but at the same time, <laughs> so, I fire them too. Favorite days when I fire them. So let me so ask funny. you. Let me ask you something. <laughs> Do you really think? But I sorry, PhD. I uh, not working I, out. I have to ask then. I have to ask then. <laughs> If you look, it just okay. You're making inter- interesting arguments, but I would ask then: uh, Would you look at Taylor Swift, who has millions of dollars, and say she's intelligent? She has a high IQ. No, she doesn't. She is so smart, dude. She, she's all like her a genius. songs are written by are other kidding? people. A hundred people from Honduras wrote her Taylor Swift songs. Not not in here, not in this forum, but. I mean, we can't save the world. What do you What do you propose? No, I'm not. You, I'm what, not proposing. No, what, what, what this sounds like, though, is the speech, the type of talk, the type of discussion that has gotten us to this situation in the first place. This is the type of discussion a panel of the Education Committee of uh, New Hampshire or whatever the fuck it is would be talking about. Like, how can we save these fucking poor ass Hondurans? You know, you sound like John <laughs> Rockefeller. <laughs> You know, it's I like, I, I, I care about people, but I can't solve the world's problems. No, you I can't <laughs> solve our own but fucking it, problems. At the same time, I think you're confused. To, uh, <laughs> I think you're confused. No, deal with everything. <laughs> if you leave people alone, they will figure out how to create wealth for themselves. People I don't know if I just agree with that. I want that. to say one thing about people on the free market. I love it. So join it. Guys, go get a business, get some employees, do yeah. some work, and you'll hate employees very soon. You'll be very mad. No, <laughs> so free market sounds stupid, great till you're in it. Go I, get in there. They're not really I'm not, because... Uh, just, Joe, I'm go not... Go to war. I'm not convinced that everyone is interested in taking care of themselves. I'm not. Absolutely not. A lot of people, like... I, he, I think if, if you're suffering and nobody is willing to throw free money at you, you will have a motivation to be willing to take care of yourself to the level of whatever comfort it is that you're looking for. And that's going to vary from one person to the other. What if you don't know what suffering is, right? Right. What if, what if you don't have anything to compare your life to? And it's, it's like certain who do heroin addicts hang around with? I mean, it's an extreme Which example. Which people? Because most people who are on heroin are wealthy. 
Well, just like all drug addicts, but the majority of drug addicts have good jobs. Some people buy Bentleys. They don't buy it from people on bicycles walking around with dope money. OK, if you're going to buy a Bentley or a nice house, which most uh, very successful drug dealers have, it's because wealthy people buy drugs from them. So I, I so maybe have, I'm making have, a more drug addict clinics that cost like 10,000 a week to go to. OK, poor people can't go there. And those places are thriving because wealthy people do drugs. So please, uh, the, well, the concept I mean, of this classism thing is ridiculous. When I say heroin addict, maybe I'm making a more cartoonish example. When you picture a bunch of people in a flop house sleeping on cardboard boxes, right? Who do they hang around with? Other people who have that lifestyle versus like joggers or doctors, right? Um, doctors are on drugs. They want, they're in social circles. I also on, agree with they're that. They're on drugs. They're in social Illegally. circles that normalize the, the way of functioning or the Special behavior dentists. or the, the lifestyle that they have, right? So that's an even more extreme example if you go to Honduras where a person has never even had access to another way of living life, right? So they don't even, what we call suffering, they might not even know is suffering. Therefore, they don't have the motivation. <laughs> what? What? Are, what? <laughs> You're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if someone tried to compare America to people they met in the foothills of Michigan or Kentucky? And you can't do that, guys. There are very rich people in every country. They're very highly educated. There is. Uh, if you're talking about economics on a large scale, that has nothing to do with the individuals or IQs. Yes, it that does. Has to do with, that has to do with how the, cr the state crafts the state. And feds and the, the governments at large craft the different economic zones within corp uh, communities. So you're talking about something much larger than individuals that dwell there. Well, uh, that's every, like trying to blame workers at a factory for what the factory decides to do. Well, every every in, in every action that you take is an economic action. Now, you may you may sit there and say, well, you you might start sitting there saying to me, "Oh, you're talking money." No. Everything that you do in in in, in econ um Everything you do has a reason. And, and it has a motivation and it has a cost. Account, account. Correct. And that is economic behavior. Everyone is economic. Um, we all expend energy. We all dedicate energy towards certain things or we don't expend it towards other things because we understand that there's limited time, limited resource, limited fuel that we have. So every action or decision that we make is economic. What do you think of Daniel Kahneman's work? Do you know that you know who that is? Um, thinking I've heard fast. The name, thinking but I'm not thinking the, fast. The discipline that he developed was called behavioral economics. Yes, right? yes, and what yes, he said yes, is yes. no one is behaving rationally. No. I'm not saying that people necessarily behave rationally. What they will do is they will they will make decisions based on information that they have that they perceive to be the most rational decision. So basically, or essentially what you're saying is people like, for example, Kuwait. Do you know that Kuwaiti citizens are so rich at birth that each one is entitled to 80000 a year from their government? That's why no one works there. They actually, right. everybody in Kuwait that works uh, comes from someplace else. So you get 80000 a year just being a citizen, being right. born there. Yeah. That does not make them IQ smart. That means Britain didn't have their own land, so they took this place from Iraq, and that just makes us really small, wealthy place that... Uh, uh, the British are controlling. Right. That does not make them smart at all. Uh, I didn't say. <laughs> I didn't say not being rich makes you smart. Taylor Swift is not smart. She's That's correct. Rich. And neither are neither is the Kuwaiti government or Kuwait itself or the people. There. Right. Right. So it has uh, nothing to do with the people. There's nothing to do with them. That was done by the British government, who took uh, the property and turned into their giant uh, oil. Uh, so are you saying service. they're not smart because they're brown? No, I'm saying I'm saying they, they are not brown. First of all, are you kidding me? Iraqis compared to them all the time. They're brown as shit. Fuck you. No, a lot of a lot of uh, Iraqis are. I mean, excuse me, uh, Kuwaitis are not. Um, some are, some are, some are. Brett's like that sounds pretty racist. Open his eyes wide. Some are. Some are. Saying, oh, how did I get some stuck are. up here with these guys? <laughs> no, this is great. That's this is fine. <laughs> Don't play the race card on me. Look, look. <laughs> You're not her enduring. I Be am. honest. I am. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Just the thing. I'm the thing. Just be honest. Don't be afraid. Go don't ahead, lie. Brian. It sounds like Stop you. lying. Right. It seems like you want to say I something. I love you, brother. <laughs> now, I, I wanted to get more of your thoughts as an economist on, on that idea that, that Ken have been saying that no one is behaving rationally. Well, I, I just said, like, my point of view is that um, he's not, 
he, he, he misphrased it. When I look at uh, human activity... I can write, I just add one thing to it and then you can respond because maybe I'm not giving okay, like go enough ahead, go of ahead. a synopsis. So he said people have a need to act rationally, right? Like nobody wants to do something and say, when questioned, why did I do that? Like, because I'm a fucking idiot, because I'm stupid, because I don't think about the things that I do. No one wants to give that answer, right? right. right? Like, even if somebody, you know, beats up their spouse or something, they're going to try and give a cause and effect. They, right. They're, so, they're going to have this impulse to go to some kind of cause and effect right. explanation of what happened and why they did that. Yeah. So we have a need to make meaning and act rationally, but the things that's behind that surface rationalization of action is almost always... It, I, even, maybe irrational uh, yeah. is too weighted, but like to say it's emotional. They're driven by emotions, and yep. sometimes they don't properly and inventory them. Subconscious drives. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so we, we are emotional animals. I think everything we do is Mike's emotions an emotional more important. Animal. But we're also rational, and so we have to well, finish the, it. What, we like, have to finish it with a little rationality. Like, was, oh, what I had okay. said earlier was, people will make decisions based on the information that they have, and. If that information is misleading or misinformative or um, uh, based on a lie or whatever have you, they will try and take that information and process it in a, in a pattern where they can sit there and say, well, I was justified based on the information I had. Now, okay. We're saying not, similar things. Yeah. yeah. It's not to say that the information was good. It's to say that... They re what they thought was good information is not exactly good information. Right. So uh, to them, it, to us, to a lot of us, it would look irrational. But at the same time, if they have limited knowledge on a particular topic or subject or whatever they're dealing with. Which is normal. Uh, which is, yes, it's, it's perfectly normal. Um, then they will execute decisions based on that limited information even if it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I can't necessarily fault them for that, but at the same time, it's, I'll be honest, we, 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 we have a lot of information resources nowadays. We have libraries, which I'm not fond of, but we, we've had them for what, 100, 200 years now, whatever have you. In the country of Africa, even longer. Uh, okay, and um, we have, we have. <laughs> Timbuktu. Okay. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wakananda, whatever. <laughs> Wakanda forever. Um, but um, we have internet in India. And um, we have all this access to information. But the thing about it, and this is what I find frustrating, is that people don't necessarily want to hear things that are uncomfortable. No, they and, hate that. And that is... The, the problem that I have with um, going back to like to the beginning is that I think a lot of pa parents want to educate their children but they also don't want to hurt them in the process okay. and they don't want to upset their children they don't and even themselves they don't want to upset themselves but there's a lot of things about reality that are very very unsettling very yes and like you you're very unsettling just in general. <laughs> uh, and but, I don't mind Gandhi. <laughs> but but that's the crux is where I sit there like if misinformation can be spread through um, I guess parenting techniques it doesn't help the idea of necessarily unschooling. Unschooling. And I'm not I'm not it's not I'm not trying to like say we should all go to public school. You know what's funny? I had a conversation with people on, on online about this because I, I'm connected with people in California. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a part of um, uh, alternative schooling concepts out there with David Rodriguez. I don't know if you know him and he's really big into um, a new form of education homeschooling and people taking responsibility for teaching their own kids um, and alternative education uh, expos in general. Right. And um, what's interesting is that I brought that up. I said, well, you know, it's great to have uh, real education, parents teaching their kids, homeschooling. That's great as long as they're teaching truth. Yeah. But if you're teaching either fabricated uh, religious type doctrine 
doctrine, indoctrination concepts. If you're teaching these other things, it's deleterious. It's actually worse. The government school was already teaching false knowledge throughout history. And now what if the parents are teaching even more false knowledge? Now you have mentally ill uh, um, you know, parents, uh, kids are even worse. I, I know of a, of a certain religion here in America that's only here in America that teaches that a scientist made European people um, and there's millions of followers of this religion. A scientist made them and that there's a mothership coming to America. Nope, it's not Scientology. It's weirder than that. And it's 144,000 of these people are going to be taken. What, 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 you got to tell us what this is. <laughs> you got to tell us. Uh, I, I thought Scientology was off the hand. rails, but you got to tell us what this thing is. Um, <clears throat> It Essentially, uh, it's the religion that Malcolm X was a part of first. And when he found out that that's not Islam, he stopped being a part of it. And he began to uh, realize that everything he was taught there was a lie. And imagine there's millions of people being indoctrinated into this thought process that is, and I thought it was actually a good thing because I saw discipline and structure, people with bow ties on, marching, and I saw them doing things, they had haircuts, and they were... Um, you know, being very mannerable, and I thought that was good. But that's indoctrination, and it's indoctrination to a total, totally inappropriate thought process. It's literally worse than not being educated at, at all. So I have just uh, one sentence I, that can kind of sum this up. Having the, the parent educate the child does not guarantee the child is not going to be taught nonsense, but sending the child to public school guarantees that they will be. Here, here. Yeah. The so, other problem is we're letting, that was well said, we're also letting the definition wobble too much on the word we unschooling. Are. We are. Right? Well, because yeah. if, if unschooling, like it's implied that unschooling is a problem if you have defective or stupid parents, but if we follow the true definition of unschooling, those children are set free to explore the world on their own terms. But we also have to remember too, so if we're just sticking to the most basic definition of what unschooling is, but then we remember that parents are always able to create a terrarium for that unschooling to take place inside, right? So if it was, we could have had, I think, a, a more precise conversation if you said, what if these, uh, you know, butternuts, dipshit people homeschool, homeschool, right? They teach their kids at home, right? Then I'm with you from the beginning and something didn't sit right with me about it. And I, I apologize to everyone listening that it took this long to identify, but... Um, the, the unschooling, but it actually, it presents this other problem too, because what school does is it gives you this, uh, Dale said this, the illusion of education, this facsimile of education. It's Plato's cave. Like we just saw with the whole gun thing in Parkland, right? It's like, hey kids, do you want to be super enlightened on the issue of guns? Do you want to know the uh, common sense way to think about guns right, and right. be scared of guns like you should be because that's rational? That's the shadows on the wall of Plato's cave, Yes, right? And then if somebody comes in and says, hey, you guys are staring at a wall in a cave, if people have developed comfort with the shadows on the wall as the reality, they're going to kill that person, right? Yep. And we saw that like a bunch of kids stood up and said, um, I'm not on board with this whole walk out of school thing or march for our lives. And they got attacked by people in the media and by those other kids who became Twitter stars. So I think that school does a great job of creating this artificial, like this is, um, in, a, in a lot of disciplines, they call it playpen creativity. Like, so giving people, there's a great book called Discipline Minds. It's written by a physicist who I think was a college professor. And he talks about giving people that need to conform to a certain field, to a certain structure, to not think outside the box, the old cliche. They make a playpen for them to pretend they're being creative and free-minded inside. So that happens in higher education. It happens in public school. And it can certainly happen in a homeschooling and even an unschooling environment right yes so that's i think more precision but the problem that you first brought up still could exist right. unless parents were really passionate about this idea of letting their kids explore and uh, opening the terrarium door there i mean there's there's nothing wrong with opening the terrarium door exactly but the, the, the problem becomes is like how what is a what is tolerable right you know what 
what are we willing to allow what are we willing to expose our kids to there's a reason I, this is why early on i was making cracks about like the fact that my parents put me in a cage and gave me a helmet um uh, even if you think that you're providing your your child freedom uh to go and learn and explore the world in a lot of ways you can shelter them in the same process and i just sit there like this doesn't strike me as necessarily a solution mm. It strikes me as a different way of going about a very, very, very complex topic. Yeah. Uh, that's all I was really trying to well, get at with it. If it's a complex topic, then I still say... Get, get five other guys? <laughs> let the market decide. I mean, yeah. let, let shit happen the way it is, and I like what you guys said, you know, Joe said, it's, uh, you know, we, we know school is going to be bad, so. It's an unfortunate. And, and, and the way that, I'm sorry, the way the government does it and the school does it is they define, like with the uh, school shootings, they define the questions so that yeah. you, you either have to choose the right answer or you're a evil person who wants to kill kids or something you know what i mean it's if they define the question well, i mean there's nothing wrong with killing children that's why we have abortion. okay <laughs> that might be a little bit the racist stuff was fine but you're getting you're getting a little off the, just went to the left field yeah you're getting a little bit off well the it's station now it's an unfortunate like catch-22 with the whole with the whole question right it, especially if if people allow the conversation to become you know this or school Right, where, where there is something, there's something implied, right? In, I'm not saying you're implying it, but most people would hear that question and say, okay, so this is an argument for school, which was my first impulse when I heard your question. So you have the, in the, on the one hand, you have parents who are, I'm sorry I keep using the word defective, but defective in a way where they want to use their children as mirrors for their own shitty ideas. Yes. Right? Yes. They want they want a chorus yeah. to sing their bullshit back to them. Right? <laughs> they want so, legacy. So the alternative is those kids go to school. <laughs> right? And then they do their, they, all goes well, they do well in school. So they uh, make it to higher education where so many of those people are there to have choruses of young people sing their bullshit back to them in a whole new religion right so that's it the questioning the question was just kind of discouraging it's a discouraging way to start the show welcome to danny so issue one settled issue number two go i don't have any other issues i mean <laughs> No, I'm I'm set. I think this. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that this is the end of the show, but I, what I would say is I'm very happy with this conversation. It's okay. productive yeah. in my view. I, think I still the, uh, think I still think the black guy is wrong. What do you think <laughs> of the education? As I think the guy from India to my right is also wrong. What do you guys think of the education <laughs> system in the country of Africa? <laughs> The uh, country of Africa so has a library. Yes, <laughs> one library for a hundred years. <laughs> one library in all of Africa. <laughs> the country is kind of big. It's a big country. All right, Brett. So, so, what, uh, so what do you want to say, Brett? I don't know. What do you guys usually do? You open it up to audience questions or topics? We well, so have a dance well, here in a minute. Well, we uh, we yeah, we're setting up. Anybody got a question? We we got right, a question. Oh, oh, fuck it. If you use Danny's mic, like, <laughs> what can you do wrong to make somebody to grow up and drink Miller Lite? <laughs> like, what, what went wrong in your life that you decided to start drinking I, Miller Lite? He Light? had me pick some up for him one time. I made a meme. It's like, when warm piss just ain't good enough. And I took a picture of a case of Miller Lite that I bought for him. I just want to know, how did it happen, Danny? Tell us. Uh, I met you. Okay. <laughs> That's the only beer they have in Honduras. Sir, come up. Get, come come up, on up. Grab come a up. mic. Grab a mic, man. <laughs> Not me, one of these the mechanical ones. First of all, I want to say very entertaining. Right. You got to get it close to your face. <laughs> it's okay, not very a entertaining. Thank you very much. <laughs> but on a more serious note, what you guys have been discussing close to your mouth what you guys have been discussing is how best to control other human beings exactly that's what i was trying to say Let the i agree with you to an extent but i would sit there and also suggest that 
it's incumbent you sit upon down and mind your own goddamn business <laughs> <laughs> i think it's incum- i think it is mandatory if you're a loving parent i, I think that was an excellent point by the way yeah he, 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 has, he, he, has, he has he has a good point but are we are we talking about how to con- see see exactly what i'm talking well, about right i there. think that's what danny has been worried Education. about this whole time oh, no no <laughs> My, I love your response. I do. But as a parent, and I... Come out of the closet. You you have kids, right? (laughs) You're a statist. (laughs) No, you you have kids, right? Honduras is a state. Do you not see the importance of educating your kids in the best way that you know how to with the knowledge that you are given? Right, and there's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, it is a mindset that you are giving them. It's an influence that you are providing them. But I have no right to force it. No, you didn't, you didn't force it. Right, you didn't, you didn't force it on any parents or any other, right, I get that. But when you tell your kid, hey kid, this is what I think is true, your kid tends to inherently trust you, not, Maybe I mean, so so what he's saying is you can't. People are gonna be fucking stupid and tell their kids a bunch of stupid shit. Yeah, and I mean, what he Joe told said is all time bullshit you too. can guarantee the state will do it wrong. <laughs> At least uh, you got a a, a a chance. You know, you got a shotgun's chance. You know, with the uh, doing it with uh, unschooling. I think yeah. that's well, what well, Joe said. You understand my point, Brett? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, parents, the, the relationship between children and parents tends to be high level trust and a lot of children tend to be um, dependent on the parents information to guide themselves through life yeah Have I think heard of we it? all understand that children will grow up to not trust <laughs> first of all Danny I'm going to address you first there are several Several type of intelligence. You gotta get that mic close to your mouth. There are several types of intelligence Closer. that people have. And do you have co- wait a like minute. a half of wait. one of them? No, no. Intelligences. It's not just talents. It's intelligences. It has absolutely nothing to do with your IQ in terms of how we measure IQ. What it has to do with is what people know. And what they can impart to another person. You could be brilliant, but if you are not a person who could actually be able to get other people motivated or to be able to understand, then it really doesn't matter. I could tell you this. My grandmother did not have an education, but she was a brilliant person to me because I learned a lot from her and the different intelligences is what carry people through life not just what we measure in terms of a person's IQ or what their identity is none of that and when a parent try to do what they think is best that's all they could do it's and I look at it from a lot of different perspectives because I consider myself uh, pretty average. You might consider yourself really intelligent. But with me, the way I generally look and think of people and how they make decisions, especially with their children. I have four, I have six grandchildren. So when I think of intelligence, I think about what can I import to each of the people in my life? And it's different for every person. So when a parent is making that decision, it's emotional. Some of it's emotional because they, it, it, I don't care whether it's rational, it's real, it's real, it's real. And a lot of time, if things are real, you are able to connect with a person and they will learn more from a person whether it's rational or irrational. Do you get? I, I get you, what you're saying. But I, do you have a child? Do you have children? No. Well, then, no, I don't, I don't have children. No, well, then I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Mic All right. Job. All right, Annette. I, I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you very bluntly here. I'm going to ask you very bluntly. You ever, uh, you ever travel? She you, travels. You, you ever, you ever been on plane? She's been on lots okay. of planes. Okay. She's been on lots of planes. Okay. Danny, she does not want to join the Mile High Club with you. Uh, oh! <laughs> she asks everybody that all the time. Okay. So, Annette. <laughs> she likes Mexicans. I, I, think, I, I, I think on that note, we should wrap hold up on, the no, show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> let me ask you, you let, 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 let me ask you, room. As much as I love you, um, as much as I love you, uh, I have to ask, if, if you say intelligence is not necessarily as important, then I would ask... I she did not say that, Danny. What, what did she say precisely? She said there are different types of intelligence. Okay, okay. Okay, right. Different types of intelligence. And I, okay, I can get along with that. How comfortable would you feel if you were on a plane and your the the pilot, room? no, and the pilots both had Down syndrome? Well, they don't have the right. <laughs> I would feel I would feel yeah. fine because if he was a pilot, it yeah. meant that he had been well freaking trained. Exactly. If he was a pilot, obviously trained. You need to hear me. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right, on, that, on that note, we really do need to wrap up the show. That dropped the mic. Um, One more, come on. We, we, we've got all kinds of audience who wants to participate. Uh, <laughs> Please, wireless mics next time. Kind of a comment. Um, maybe instead of saying unschooling, we should say disindoctrination. That's a better term. I actually agree with that. That's a better There's term. There's a term de-schooling for when kids um, learn not to learn. They learn not to, they, they have to deprogram from school. So that's like de schooling and disindoctrination would be similar concepts. Unschooling's not really a great term. It's got the word school in it, right? It's not talking about it what it is, yeah. it's talking about what it isn't. And maybe that's because it can be so many things, but like what we're promoting, at least on my show, and what I think a lot of people who educate their, or have taken, you know, charge of their own education of their families here, we're talking about self-directed learning, that the learner is the person responsible for uh, learning. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But. I don't know. I, you're saying I'm hearing a lot about school sucks and all this diff, unschooling, de and doc, whatever. You just you can just call it bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard anything about teachers. Good teachers matter. I agree. Okay, because you're saying our oh, school's education, not good and matters. and parents and parents teaching the unschooling, but people who are really good at teaching are necessary are necessary and make a big difference here's an example right here uh right I sure think, um, you're not talking about that guy yeah i did yeah. i mean i mean he's a okay. mexican <laughs> <laughs> i think this group is 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 very focused on teaching i mean pretty much everyone in here likes to teach people what we are our thoughts and beliefs in this uh, a lot of these subjects yeah but people who are really knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about and like expert in educating you know like an expert airline pilot or a surgeon i mean would you want me to perform heart surgery on you uh, maybe for the story <laughs> Well, that's what I alluded to earlier, like having pilots that are that have severe Down syndrome. Yeah, and that is funny, is but that's pilot. fucked up. Where is Ola? He's a pilot. I said the pilot. I said the pilot, said the pilot where had Down syndrome. We pilot's license for the game. <laughs> no, I said, would you want pilots that had Down syndrome? And that's... Well, if they're a pilot, that means they're already certified as a pilot. Yes. So you have to say, would you like to in the cockpit who's Down syndrome? Yeah. Okay. That's what and, you but, say. You, you, Okay. Okay, yeah. we're just using words. 
but oh, making okay. only yeah. if they are matter. only if they are a certified <laughs> member of Al-Qaeda. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> so I don't think anybody I don't think anybody is disagreeing with you about the value of good teachers. You're just and, not talking about it. It, it hasn't come up. It doesn't mean we don't believe in it. Thank you for bringing it up. And, you know, as far as like, yeah, I have a website that has the word school sucks in it. And if you look at, um, you know, the importance of good teachers and we each kind of like trace our schooling experience and inventory how many good teachers we had from first grade to 12th grade. I mean, if I had... 60 teachers over that maybe three of them had a really positive impact on me um so when people say things like and i'm not saying you're making this argument but if somebody says well school wasn't that bad because when i was in fifth grade i had mrs duffy and she was amazing right not not to take anything away from good teachers but that's a shit argument in favor of school if someone was trying to make it right imagine if somebody did the same thing for dentists Right? If you had 60 dentists and you had a story about one of them being good, dentistry sucks shit. Right? Is that fair? Uh, probably. I get the yeah, what he's saying is we're not really talking about um, teachers. No, no, we are. But the education, uh, educational system kind of sucks. But the two ideas, I'm saying the two ideas are related, right? Like school sucking and the problems with school has a lot to do with the absence of quality educators. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's what that whole thing I just said was. I I just reset it as one sentence. Yeah. Sorry about uh, the long way. And and educators are people that are good teachers, not people with high levels of formal education. They are people that love students. They love to see students learning. The and best they, teachers are people that love to see learning, not people that have PhDs or two PhDs. And I've had some terrible teachers with extreme uh, college education with absolutely no ability to communicate and to uh, help other people perform so, and learn. So you, you, you pick these educators to, to, to teach your employees, right? Uh... What? <laughs> what? You, you, you pick not these what he PhD was about. people to absolutely not. No, they work. They, they I've had, I've had PhDs work <laughs> for me as workers, <laughs> not as educators. He's talking about his own personal school. <laughs> so the, um, I just want to point out that we've got a um, a crystal ball here on our speaker, and the reason for that is. The room wants to be used for a dance. ball at this point. We're ruining a perfectly Danny, come good up dance. here and say one more question. <laughs> okay. It's, it's kind of, okay, it's kind of a response, though. Okay, Danny. I want Danny. to just clarify that, like, you like my parents aren't the only voice. ones teaching their kids. Like, if a child is honestly self-directed in their learning and they want to learn something, they're motivated That's and they're right. empowered to reach out they to the greater community empowered. this is someone who has had uh they who, can be empowered it doesn't say who's a co-founder no, of this fest question. and has home different. has unschooled and homeschooled her children for most of their lives it takes a village from the audience <laughs> <laughs> it takes communism good night everybody all right good night.